Subject is understanding purpose. And this is part two. Scripture is Ecclesiastes chapter three and in verse one. It said to everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. We read Romans chapter 8 verse 28 where he said, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. I'd like you to take special attention of the word purpose. There is a time To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. Our master Jesus Christ had a purpose. First John chapter 3 verse 8 the Bible said Beloved he that committed sin is of the devil for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Today, we shall be first and foremost understanding purpose and secondly, understanding the profit of understanding purpose. We had some generalizations from the first service. Certain things that scriptures make clear. And the first of this is that God is the God of time and purpose. He is a God of time and purpose. That is, he has a purpose for what he does and he has a time for what he purposed. Secondly, we said that God is deliberate, intentional, calculated, premeditated in all he does. He is deliberate. He is intentional. He is calculated. He is premeditated. Whatever he does are things he has thought through, including your creation. He was deliberate. He was intentional. He was calculated. He was premeditated in your creation. Thirdly, we said that God is never flippant, superficial, shallow, or thoughtless in what he does. He's not shallow. He's not flippant. We don't serve an absent-minded God. He did not create you and then begin to wonder why, why he created you or what to do with your life. He's never flippant. He's never superficial. He's never shallow. He's never thoughtless. Then we said that God is the God who purposes his acts and acts his purposes. He purposes his acts. That is before he acts, he has a purpose. And when he, the purpose is clear, he goes to action. That is, your life was well purposed before God acted. Let me add one more point to this in this service. That God is the God who does what will count and counts what he does? He does what will count and counts what he does. God does not do anything that does not matter. He is such a, a business-minded God that he will not waste his time creating nothing. God does what will count and counts 
what he does counts what he does. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 16, he talked about the creation of the stars and God made it made two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night he made the stars also and after he has made the stars he counted the stars psalm 147 verse 4 he said he telleth the number of the stars he calleth them all by their names billions of stars he doesn't only know, know their number, he named them. So what devil is that that will tell you that you are useless? What is the benefit of a star to God? Yet, he counted them. Billions, trillions, quadrillions of stars. He knows their number. Apart from knowing their number, he knows their names. He knows their names. Then the devil said, God doesn't know your name. He doesn't care for you. You are here for nothing. That devil is a bastard liar. And then after he created you, he didn't just number your hair. He counted them. He didn't just count your hair. He numbered them. The Bible said, we said, he is the God who does what will count and counts what he does. Luke chapter 12, verse 6 and 7. See what he said. And are not five sparrows sold for two farthings? And not one of them is forgotten before God. He, he said the bird that fly on the road, there are two of them. In fact, they are cost, they are not, they don't cost anything. Two of them for one naira. He said, yet they are not forgotten before God. He said the hunter's arrow cannot bring anyone down before without God's permission. He said, but even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are more, you are of more value than many sparrows. He didn't say your hair was counted. Say they are numbered. Counted means you have 100,000 hairs in your head. Numbered means the hair that just dropped is hair number 105,000. It's, it's, they are numbered. This is number one, number two, number three. Can God be more interested in your hair than in your life? Before this month is over, that demon that says you are nothing, the agenda of that demon will be blasted out forever. <laughs> These are things we have noted. The question then is, what is purpose? God's purpose for your life. What is it? Number one. Your purpose is the necessity that influenced your creation by God. It has been said that necessity is the mother of invention. The necessity that influenced your creation by God. The need that made God to bring you to the earth. The need he wants you to meet is your purpose. I dealt extensively with that in the first service. Secondly, your purpose is the desire or the pleasure you were designed and created to fulfill for the creator. Thou art worthy, O Lord. To receive glory, honor, and power. For thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created. What kind of 
happiness were you created to give him? That is your purpose. What kind of pleasure were you created to give your creator? What desire was in his heart for you to fulfill your purpose? Number three, your purpose is the assignment, mission, or duty you were created to fulfill. I'm going to dwell with this and the next point a bit in this service. It is the assignment, the mission, or the duty you were created to fulfill. In Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, he spoke to Jeremiah and he said, Before I formed thee, in the belly I knew thee. And before thou camest forth, out of the womb I sanctified thee, and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. That was his mission. That was his duty. Your purpose is the assignment mission or duty you are in existence to accomplish. The assignment mission or duty you are in existence to accomplish. Let me say it in a way you will understand. Your purpose is that particular duty you were designed to pour your life's labor into. That particular duty, that particular enterprise, that particular endeavor, you were designed to pour your life's energy, your life's labor, and your life's time into. That particular thing, that area of life, where you die, where you where you focus your energy, you concentrate your labor, you concentrate your life's time. That is your purpose. Because your energy is not meant for everything. Your time is not meant for everything. Your labor is not meant for every direction. I came across something some years ago that I will never forget. I was reading a Kenneth Hagin's book and he said after about 19 years of ministry he was in prayer one day after he had ministered for 19 years and then God told him get ready because you are about to enter the first chapter of my purpose for your life. I said what? For all these 17, 18, 19 years what have I been doing with my life? And I read that book around when I was also around 17, 18, 19 years of full-time ministry. I'm about to show you, you see, that is to show you how many people die without doing what God asked them to do. After about 19 years, you are about to step into the first chapter. What have I been doing? Or maybe it was rehearsal. It's possible. Or maybe it was life poured in the wrong direction. Your purpose is that area, that endeavor, that enterprise that is qualified for your energy, that is qualified for your effort, that is qualified for your time. That was number three. Number four, your purpose is the worth, benefit, and value of your existence to both divinity and humanity is the worth the benefit the value of your existence to both divinity and humanity the worth the benefit the value the worth the benefit the value of your existence to both divinity and humanity. Let me say it like this. Your purpose is the justification of your existence. What justifies why you are alive? Your purpose. 
justification, the justification for your eating, your sleep, the reason why you eat and sleep and rest and dress to achieve what? That is purpose. Say it another way. Your purpose is the gain, the profit, or the merit of your life in the earth. The gain, the profit, the merit of your life. What is the gain? Your life is gainful to who? To God and man, to who? Your life is profitable to who? The gain, the profit, the merit of your life. To God and man and to society and system. What is your gain? What is your merit? What is your purpose? What gain? What merit? What profit? Have you got to offer? It's called purpose. Your purpose is that which makes you valuable in the earth. The reason why you are not a valueless person is purpose. Let me point it down. Let me boil it down to two things. Your purpose is the value you are on the earth to create. The value you are in the earth to add or to create. The value you are in the earth to create. The value, whether for your family members, whether to, to, to a nation, a church, or whether to a ministry or an assignment, or whether to, to whatever, to the kingdom of God, the value you are in the earth to create, the value you are there to add, it's called purpose. And finally, on that note, your purpose is the difference you are on the earth to make. What difference are you in the earth to make? What difference are you making in the church? What difference are you making in society? What difference are you making in your nation? It is a reflection of your purpose. You know when I said your worth, your benefit, one day Israel faced Goliath, they couldn't bring him down. And then a man of purpose arrived. His name was David. And then the people sang his song. In 1 Samuel chapter 18 verse 6 to 9, when David brought down Goliath, it came to pass. As they came, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, that the women came out of all the cities of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tablets, with joy, and with the instruments of music. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul has slain his thousands. And David, his ten thousand. What a life. What a worth. Definitely they allocated more value to David's life than to Saul. Then one day, David wanted to go into battle to physically face some giants. Second Samuel chapter 18, verse 1 to 3. This will touch you. And David numbered the people that were with him and set captains of thousands and captains of hundreds over them. And David sent forth a third part of the people under the hand of Joab, a third part of the, under the hand of Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, Josh, Joab's brother, and a third part under the hand of Itai the Gittite. And the king said unto the people, I will surely go forth with you myself also. But the people answered, Thou shalt not go forth. For if we flee away, they will not care for us. Neither if half of us die, will it, will it matter too much? Will they care for us? But now, you are worth 10,000 of us. Therefore now, it is better that you stay in the city and support us from there. David, all men are equal in, by creation, but not equal in impact. You, the, the, the result of your life is equal to the result of 1,000 people. Don't follow us and be wasted easily. You are that is that is your weight. You carry weight, David. That's what purpose is all about. 
the worth. What is your, what worth? What value? What is the worth, the value, and the benefit of your existence? Is your purpose in the earth. Number five. Your purpose is the sum total of the mark and the impact you have been placed on the earth to make the mark, the impact. I will deal with that in the next service. The sum total of the mark and of the impact you have been placed on the earth to make. Finally, your purpose is the outcome or the end product you are in existence to achieve. The outcome or the end product you are in existence to achieve. At the end of the day, what have you achieved? Fading away like the stars of the morning, losing their light in the glorious sun. Thus would we pass from the earth and his toiling. Oh, I want we have done. That's the, the purpose, the, 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 the outcome, the end product. If that is what purpose is, what is the profit of understanding purpose? Why is it that you need to know why you are alive? Number one, understanding purpose delivers people from the feeling of hopelessness, worthlessness, and uselessness in life. The feeling of hopelessness, worthlessness, and uselessness in life, you get delivered from it. When you know that you are not a mistake on earth, even if your father did not marry your mother, even if they say that you came out of outside wedlock, it doesn't matter. The fact that you couldn't have been born if God did not allow you and if God did not plan your life means that you are not worthless. When you understand purpose, you are delivered from the feeling of hopelessness, worthlessness and uselessness. There may be unwanted pregnancy, but there are no unwanted children or unwanted destinies. There may be illegitimate parents, but no illegitimate child. Every child that came out, once it comes out, or the child came out, provided the child is born, not that it is supported to give birth to children that you don't, you, 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 you didn't, you didn't, I mean, without getting married, it's good to do it correctly. But once the child is born, even if the person didn't do any correct thing first, God will have a plan for the child. Number two, understanding purpose delivers people from the tragedy of a wasted life. When you don't know why you are alive, you waste your life, you waste everything. Number three, which I will deal with in the service. Understanding purpose helps to direct life's energy, time, and resources to what really matters to life. You just direct, direct your time. You direct your energy. You direct your resources to what matters. Philippians chapter 3 verse 13 and 14. Scripture said, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth to those things which are before. I press toward 
the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I am pressing somewhere. I am directing my energy. I think it was the New Living Bible Version. If you have it, please place it on the screen. Philippians chapter 3 verse 13 to 14. 13 to 14. He said, no, dear brothers, I am still not all I should be, but I am bringing all my energies to bear on this one thing. All my energies. I am not dividing my energy in many directions. When you know your purpose in business, you don't distribute your money everywhere and lose money here and there. You know where you are to face. I bring my energies to bear on this one thing. Energies to bear. Understanding purpose brings focus and concentration to life. There is focus. There is concentration to life in every aspect. Purposeful people are focused people. They are highly concentrated, very intense. They don't have spare time to waste. They don't have spare energy to waste. They don't have even spare resources to waste. Brings focus and concentration to life in every respect. When you see a distracted person, it's an unfocused person. When you see a person everywhere, eventually ends nowhere, it's, a, it's an unfocused person. Focus makes you to narrow down your effort <laughs> to that which really matters to life. You narrow down your effort. Is God speaking to anybody here at all? Number four, understanding purpose delivers people from wrong companionships and relationships. It delivers people. Listen to this. Your purpose influences your partnerships. You don't partner with just anybody. It involves, it influences your partnerships. Daniel chapter 2 verse 17 to 19. See the kind of Daniel, the people Daniel was involved with. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, to Mishael, to Azariah, his companions. See, those were his companions. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Listen to this. Your assignment defines your alignment. You don't align carelessly. Even marital alignment is defined by assignment. I won't be here now if I, was, if I was married to a wrong person. No way. Matter, you can't, no matter how hard you try. Oh, you are there with struggle and sweat. Yesterday, at the dedication of the road at the Maraba side, some people were making some comments and say, oh, that woman is always beside her husband. Anywhere the man is, whatever he's doing, she's there. So I looked at her and said, where else would you be? Where, where, you, where would you have been if you were not there? Where else? He took the woman out of the rib of the man. That's the side to be there permanently. But there are women who will never, they do the opposite of what the man does. They say the opposite. They act the opposite. Confront him. Your assignment influences your alignment. Don't align carelessly. 
Is God speaking to somebody here? That is purpose. See, some people just have all manner of people in their lives. People adding nothing. In fact, people destroying and taking away their... In fact, people fighting their vision. Fighting their purpose. Who do you think you are? How do you think you can achieve that? And those they call friends. Number five. So understanding purpose delivers from wrong companionship. Number five. Understanding purpose delivers people from the plague of imitation and competition. When you understand your purpose in life, you are in competition with nobody. We'll deal with that in the sixth, third service. You are in competition. Sixth, sixth service was in the other one. Well, it might, it, might still, it, it might still happen here. It delivers people from the plague of imitation. Yeah, there is nobody you are struggling with. I'll talk about that in the next service. Number six, understanding purpose fuels pursuit and persistence in life. Just you are, you are at it. That's your, that's your assignment. You don't have any alternative. Either you succeed or you succeed. Either it works or it works. Somebody asked me that uh, some interviewer, I think journalist, when you were coming into ministry, medical doctor, you know, I decided to become a pastor. If it had not succeeded, what would you have done? I said it never crossed my mind one day. It couldn't cross the mind. Because that option did not exist. It didn't cross one. If you see God asked him, it didn't cross one day. When you understand your purpose, there is no alternative. It's, it fuels your pursuit. It fuels your persistence. I'll talk about that in the last service and this is my counsel number one determine to understand God's purpose for your life to avoid the tragedy of a wasted life Jeremiah 33 and verse 3 call on, call on to me call on to me and I will answer you I will show you great and mighty things, things about even your own life which you didn't know about. Just call me. Call me. One of the things I feared the most in my life was to end my journey in life without fulfilling my assignment on earth. It made me very desperate. I didn't want to waste my life. And very, very early, God began to show me the things I will be doing with my life. Determined to understand. Number two, knowing that your most important purpose in life is spiritual and eternal. You must determine to live in a way that will make the most spiritual impact for time and eternity. Hence you know that your most important purpose in life is spiritual and eternal. You must determine to live. What will you do with your life when you spent your life pursuing money and at the end of the day you meet your savior having achieved nothing for the kingdom? What will you do with your life? Yes, and the pursuit of money can also be a part of the purpose of the kingdom when you pursue it with the right mentality mentality of kingdom impact mentality of saving souls mentality of touching humanity and eternity but our most important purpose is spiritual is eternal and we must determine to live in a way that will make the most spiritual impact for time and for eternity in our heavens account the only thing that enters there is what is recognizable there you cannot spend dollars you can't you can't spend naira in america no way in the same manner material things don't have much of eternal consequence except 
if they are aligned in eternal directions. And I believe that it's a new day for somebody. We will not waste our lives. Lift up your right hand everywhere you are.